Okay, so it's Daniel, I don't know, an hour or so, maybe more. Uh, it's quite a dry desert, very dry. Uh, you can tell by the ground. It does receive some rainfall during the year, as you can see. It's kind of almost mud-like. But this being the Sahara Desert still, it means it's going to receive mineral rainfall. Now, the gear I have today with me, I've got a parachute in that black bag down there. I've got a knife along with a PVC tube. So hopefully if I do get some you know, ground water, if I do make a solar still, I'll be able to uh, drink the water out of that without disturbing a solar still. Now, it's very dry out here. I'm trying to avoid licking my lips to dehydrate myself more and my feet are absolutely burning themselves on the ground. Now, I've also, I'm also about to finish off my last of my water. Uh, oh, oh my god. Oh god. Oh, it feels good. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I feel weak. I feel weak. I feel so weak from the heat already. Ah, oh, I can barely even hold this camera with my arm. Ah, uh, as you can see, there's nowhere left. Ah, uh, my parachute is in this bag here. Uh. Okay, so there's nothing to do but to start hiking again. Now, as you can see, right over there is the highest peak. If I can get to some high ground. I can figure out the lay of the land and figure out where I need to go, where I can find water, where I can find a valley, where I can find rivers, I don't know, who knows. You see behind me, the thunderstorm clouds are kicking off as well. So, would it rain? I don't know, who knows, it might do. It'd be great if it did. I'd absolutely love it. Deserts are probably one of the most inhospitable places in the world. Ah, every step I make hurts. You know, there's rocks on the floor. As I'm naked, my, it digs into my feet every time. Oh, I feel, why do I feel so weak? Ah, oh. ah. Oh. I feel like, oh. I feel like I've already got the beginnings of heat exhaustion. I feel weak. Like, ah. Oh. It does sound like there's a thunderstorm coming, but let's hope it actually hits us and doesn't avoid us. Oh my, like, what, I feel so, I don't know why I feel so weak today. I think the heat's already getting to me. Every step hurts. Oh my god, oh my god, that's hot. Oh. So this black bag absolutely just burnt me. Oh, it's a nightmare. Well, as much as deserts are ridiculously hot and dry, it's also started thunderstorming down. So I'm just in underneath my parachute, using it to help keep my body warm, using this kind of mesh to allow kind of heat to escape. As it is nylon, and nylon isn't a breathable fabric, it is still quite very warm out here, despite it is starting to rain. You know, you've got to be concerned about things like not just hyperthermia out in the desert, but sometimes hypothermia, especially if you're naked and you're not with anyone else, the symptoms can easily go unnoticed. So you've got to keep water your body temperature and see how it goes. Okay, now it's getting really wet. Oh my God. Oh, it's falling bad. It's falling. I'll be honest, I'd rather it wasn't raining at all because now I'm getting very cold. Ah. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this at all. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, god. Yeah, I'm not like. Ah! Oh. You'd think that rain is the one thing you want out in the desert. It's really not. It's really not. 
Ah, oh, god damn it. Ah, oh, fuck. It's getting worse. I think it's going to be a case of just weather, weathering out the storm. Oh, this is really bad. Oh, it's actually really unpleasant. Really unpleasant. Oh my god. It's so cold. It's so cold out here. As much as I, as much as I was looking forward to it raining, my god, it is not nice. Oh, this is not pleasant at all. Oh, this is really not pleasant. This is really not pleasant. This is dangerous as well. I could very easily fall into hypothermia. Oh, I just need to weather it out. That's all I need to do. The thing is, with this material as well, the water just gets straight through. It's like splashing all over me. Ah, this is not nice. I'm just going to wait, to be honest. It's not gonna, the way I see it, it's not going to last forever. It's going to be hot again tomorrow. So I just got to have to deal with it. And whilst I'm here, I can just... get moisture from here. It's even just clean my lips. Unfortunately nylon's never breathable so you get too hot in it and it's not waterproof so you do get wet in it. It's purely a waiting game to be honest to handle it. I've got to be careful of two things so uh, if I start getting too cold then that's going to mean I'm going to start shivering and that's going to use calories and water in that process. Uh, I do need to be concerned about any flash floods and I do need to be careful about flash floods. Uh, whilst the rain is manageable here, I know it's thunderstorming uh, and the rain could easily be heavier in a certain place further away and the water could run down and catch me off guard. So I've, I've got to be keep an eye and a lookout to see if that does happen. Hopefully not though. And what I saw, you know what? I might as well enjoy the rain. I smell really bad right now because I've been sweating really hard. So what I'm gonna do is give myself a bit of a clean even. If I'm gonna be wet anyway, I might as well be wet and clean. Ah, uh, yeah, that hasn't happened that much now. It's a bit more wet than it was a minute ago. I'm just gonna wait it out still. For a second here, I thought the uh, rain had just lit up and then it started thundering again. Whoop de whoop me. Oh, skin cold. Oh my god, it is getting actually quite cold now. It's getting later on in the day as well. So the water hasn't permeated the soil, as you can see. It didn't last too long the rain, even though I did thunder down. Yeah, I didn't get really any water out of it at all. I wet my lips, that was it. What it did do is cool me down, and that means that my body didn't have to use water to sweat. So that's kind of given me maybe a few more hours, who knows, to keep on going and keep on surviving out here. This hasn't really gone to plan. I didn't really expect it to start raining down. So my whole kind of plan of what I was doing has kind of changed. But like, ultimately it hasn't affected, it's just given me a few more hours, it hasn't affected what I've got to do to survive out here in a very dry desert because really it hasn't made a difference. Look how dry it is. Dry as a bone, as a bone. You know, as fast as it rains down, the sun and the heat would just dry that back up again in seconds. I'm trying to avoid licking my lips because that dehydrates you more as well. Yeah, so I do feel like I'm really out of place because even though the rain was a bit of a blessing because it's cooled me down, like I don't know what to expect anymore. You know, that's just throwing me for a loop. I thought this was going to be like a certain really hot, really dry desert survival, and now it's had a bit of rain, and I'm like, what else is next round the corner? What didn't I expect? What didn't I plan for? Now, deserts have a complete different set of survivals to follow uh, versus any other environment. Uh, this is because they're dry, you know, things bite you, things sting you, the sun burns you, the sun stings you. Everything out here is sapping you moisture and water, and water is one of the key things you need to survive. You know, do me without food, that's fine. Do me without water, well that's gonna be a big issue. The deserts are dry, hot and bleached. Even the 
ground will burn your feet as well. Deserts, deserts are dry, bleached, and even deserts are dry, hot, bleached, and just even the ground will burn your feet. I'm gonna have to make some kind of footwear to enable me to keep on walking tomorrow. Things you want, you make one little mistake, you could end up dying, even from hype hypothermia. You know, hypothermia is the one where your body temperature drops too low. If I did have this parachute out here, that might have been an issue, but you know, it's gonna get hot again in the desert, you're always gonna dry out. Oh my god, I'm so dehydrated. This is absolutely horrible. I'm sorry. I'm I This is absolutely horrible. I'm so dehydrated. Got sand blowing into my face, into my eyes. My energy levels are absolutely shot. I think the heat exhaustion has already got me. Like I just feel like I can barely even hold this camera up. Like I just need water. It's as simple as that. I don't care about food. Food will only dehydrate you out here because it requires water to digest it. I just need water. My mouth is so dry. Even taking away any scorpions or snakes or anything that could be out here to harm me, the heat and the sun alone is enough to kill you. Like, I'm not sure why I ever put myself through this, to be honest. Like, what am I actually gaining from being out here going through hell? It is hell. So dehydrated. Like the sun's kind of peeking out from behind the clouds. So that's kind of making things worse. <sighs> oh. It's just so dry and desolate out here. I've already had a dust storm coming at me today blowing sand and dust into my eye. I've had the potential of a flash flood that could have got me, but obviously I don't think it rained enough in the right places for that to happen. A lot of, the one thing I've got to make, avoid doing is panicking. But the hard, one of the hardest things out here is having to carry all this gear and film all this while surviving, you know? If I was just surviving, easy. If I was just carrying the gear, easy. If I was just filming, easy. But when you got to do every single part by yourself, it's so, it is like so hard. Like it's as hard of a film shoot that you'll ever get. Because you're you're starving, you're dehydrated, you're knackered. But you know you gotta avoid becoming panicky because people who are panicky make bad decisions, and bad decisions out here can be the matter between life and death. If people think about deserts, they think about the movies. You know, like from Indiana Jones to Lawrence of Arabia, from The Mummy. They just think about the sand dunes, but 80% of the desert isn't even sand dunes. It's rocks, it's gravel, it's dry. It's not always as cinematic as uh, this, you know, cinema leads you to believe it. Uh, yeah, it's just dry and it's just hot. That's just, it's dry and hot. But you know, there's different types of deserts in the world. You know, they can be sandy, they can be flat and really hard rock. They can be quite dusty. They can be kind of white sand, they can be orange sand, they can be red sand, they can be by the sea, they can be in the middle of a continent. But one thing they do have all in common is lack of water. Lack of water is what makes a desert a desert, at least precipitation wise. Now the low yearly rain this place gets is why no one lives out here. It's why animals don't live out here. It's why nothing lives out here. And it's why it's a place you don't want to ever want to find yourself in. You have to survive. If I had a choice, a desert would be the, my last choice of a place to survive. So unless you can find water, unless you're close enough to a town, then you've got no chance of getting out. At least if, you, if you're in a forest, you can actually survive in a forest for a while. As long as, as long as you can actually survive in a forest for a while, as long as you can stay warm enough and dry enough. You see, my dryness in my mouth is making me mess up my words and it's getting more difficult to film. 
This is only day one, and I just wonder how hard the rest of these days are going to be. I've got no idea to be honest. I, I don't know what I've got myself into. I, like, I get myself into situations, and I don't know how to get out of them. And it's not just water that links all deserts together. It's danger. It's a dangerous place. Hot, dry, snakes, lizards, far from water, far from food, far from shelter from the sun. Without this parachute, I will probably burn to death tomorrow. It's a very unfriendly environment and it's a place where if you are standing here, you need to be rescued very, very quickly. So a lot of things that all deserts are going to have, they're going to have low rainfall, very sparse vegetation, which means there's going to be even fewer creatures out here to eat, you know. It's not a place full of lizards and snakes. This is not enough. A jungle might be full of lizards and snakes. A desert, you're going to find them very rarely. But, you know, uh, the air temperature out here can rise as high as 60 degrees Celsius. In centigrade, uh, that's going to be around about 140 in uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, that's during the day. But the heat can get worse, and when you're sitting on the floor, you get too hot. From the wind temperatures, can be sapping the heat straight from your lips, straight from every part of your body. Equipment will die. My camera is overheating. I'm overheating. I am my camera. We don't have a great chance, to be honest. Because of like... Because of the lack of water, because water will hold temperature better than land. That's why the sea will retain temperature far on into late into the that's okay because of a desert has because desert has lack of water because desert has the lack of lack of water because a desert has a lack of water the kind of range of temperatures what it can be are way more extreme than other places because this is this is because water will regulate temperature because it will hold temperature like for example the sea temperature in britain is at its warmest in around you know august september even though the hottest months are more June and July but you know like at, at during the day it can be extremely hot during the night it can be as low as freezing in some places so you need shelter from the in the day and you need shelter to keep you warm at night which is very unique not a lot of places have that same situation normally it's like one similar temperature all day and all night this is what makes you know the evenings the best time to be able to be more productive and do things during the hot part of the day it's impossible you know i'm only vlogging out here because i'm guessing looking at the sun it's probably about it's probably about five o'clock it's probably about six o'clock maybe i don't know and the temperature's gone down the sun's at more of an angle so the direct sunlight isn't hitting me as hard as it would be if it was overhead so it's kind of manageable but i'm just still being dehydrated and that's kind of unavoidable the problem with this lack of vegetation out here is that it's hard to find shelter from the sun and if there is a risk, but the benefit of that is that if there is a rescuer out here looking for me, if this was like a situation where I needed that help, then they'd be able to find me easier because I would be more distinctive against the kind of same coloured desert. I'm a unique shape. Like in a jungle, it's very hard to find anybody because it's so dense. I've got a very counterintuitive kind of tip that you need to kind of follow when you're out in the desert. Your number one priority should not be trying to find water. Because finding water takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of water just to get your body moving in that way. It's like raining again. But it's unfortunately just blowing a lot of sand into my mouth. Yeah, your number one priority should not be to find water out in a desert. It, the problem with that is that it takes so many... Well, you should, your number one priority should not be trying to find water out in a desert. Because it takes so much energy and water just to, to find the water, it's not worth it. And you never know where you're going to find it. Unless you live out in a... Unless you live out in a desert, you'll never know if you're going to be able to find it. Your number one priority should be conserving water. The water that you've already got inside you is the water that you can find the easiest you know i don't know where the water is in this desert i don't know i can't see any but i do know i'm about 70 percent water probably going down to about 68 pretty soon 
and I know that if I can conserve this water that will help me in my survival more than trying to find out where the water is because unless you've got a map you've got no idea where it's going to be. I've been scouting around for the best location to sleep. I think I found it. Uh, it's just over here. That way it's got. So I think I found it. So basically what? So I think I found it. So if, so I think I found it. So now what it's got is a nice kind of wall and that will essentially help radiate heat back towards me in the night. Obviously this will I've been heated during the day when it was sunny and it was just giving me some residual heat at night. It's gonna help me a lot. Ah, uh, I'm gonna use my parachute and essentially put it across there with stones, using stones not so big so that if they do accidentally fall down during the middle of the night, they won't do me any harm. Let's see. They won't ever fall down onto me. Got a bit more weight on them here.
There we go, and the final part was just to tie a selfie stick for my camera gear to make it nice and airy. And when the wind, when the wind blows in, that's going to have a nice air conditioning effect. Now I was going to bury the uh, stick uh, using kind of stones and kind of mud. Ah, oh, my feet! My ah, oh, my god, that really hurt. Ah, oh. there's my shelter. Okay, so here's my shelter all done. As you can see, it's nice and airy. Uh, I'll put some bricks or some rocks down to kind of spread out the size right there. Uh, it's going to keep me nice and warm in the night. As nylon isn't breathable, it will keep the body heat in. But I've got this kind of opening for some nice air and ventilation. So one thing I made sure I'd do uh, is that I made this shelter in the evening. If you make your shelter during the day, then it's just going to heat up, trap the heat. If you make your, um, one thing I made sure I did and make one thing I made sure I did was make the shelter during the day. If you make it, no, one thing I made sure I did was make one thing I made sure I did was make the shelter during the evening when the temperatures are cool down. If you make your shelter during the day, all you're going to do is trap the heat inside it and you're going to have a hot shelter all night. That's something you want to avoid because you want to avoid wasting moisture. I did a uh, check for snakes or uh, scorpions or lizards just in case they're in my shelter. Uh, because you know the shelter does provide shade and cool uh, you know these kind of creatures would always try to find their way inside there like I've tried to make it as tight as possible like my only opening I have is just front entrance so the only way creatures gonna really come in is through the through the uh, one thing I make sure I do is I make sure I've got one entrance that means any way a creature gonna come in is, is from the front and I'll be there waiting you know having good shelter will uh, go a long way to uh, you know keep your spirits up and uh, maintain a correct body temperature. It's key, so I've made sure I made it before it gets dark. And now I'm quite happy, quite relaxed. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting a good night's sleep. You know, shelter and warmth are great for your body. Shelter and warmth are just great for your body, great for your mind, great for your soul. Because you know, whilst it may be boiling hot during the day, it can get cold at night. So I'm very thankful to have this parachute with me. Despite how heavy it is, I've, I've hated carrying it. I will never take a parachute on a trip ever again. You know, finding a cozy spot is almost as important as a find, finding a cozy finding a cozy spot is almost as good as finding a shaded spot. You know, it's great for your mind if you get a good night's sleep and attack the day like a fresh day, and just try to replenish your energy levels as your kind of sleeping does. You always got to be careful. Like over there is an overhang. I check that for any kind of creatures. I don't think there's any in there, so I should be safe. You know, any overhang creates a lot of shade, which is perfect for any desert animal because they hate the heat. They truly hate the heat, like like any of us do. Having this opening allows the air to flow, which is going to be key. You know, uh, Bedouins often carried large shelters, which could be put up in very short amount of time. They're often airy and enabled plenty of shade but also plenty of airflow. Even in the Sonoran Desert in the Americas, it's been known for temperatures to go from 134 Fahrenheit in the day to about 40 Fahrenheit at night. Now what I want to do, I want to just uh, do some time, like long, do videos and then they can be cut into time lapses if needed, just you know, just to make more footage.
uh, I'm kind of mostly done for the night. Yeah, as you can see, it's quite hard out here. But essentially, unless you know what the water is, there's no point looking for out, out for it. It's all about water in versus water out. Try to maximise the water you get in. That can be quite hard out here. So you can't really maximise the water because you haven't got any water sources. What you can do is minimise the water that goes out. If you can minimise the water that goes out, you can help increase your odds of survival and odds of finding your way out of the desert. The longer you can survive, the better you can survive. The water can be wasted from sweat. Even breathing is a way for moisture to be leaving your body. Eating food is a way for moisture to be used and drawing out your body to help the digestive system. You know, it's all about maths out here. What, managing what goes in and managing what goes out. Avoid waste, avoid sweat, avoid breathing too much, avoid talking too much, so I wanna shut up. The middle of the day is the part of the day where you really uh, want to be avoiding being out in the sun, being out doing any work, because it's gonna get way too hot. Three times, four times more water will be used if you're out in a bacon, desert sun in Africa the sun shines bright the sun shines hard like trying to look for water the risk versus the reward of it the risk is way too high the reward of it is way too low so it's not it's not worth really trying to spend all your time looking for water when you should focus in on not losing the water that you've already taken into your body now you're guaranteed to lose water by sweat and there's only a very slim chance of you actually finding water if you're going to go out looking for water. What you're best to do is to think strategically, move when it's dark, avoid strenuous activity and find some shade. You know, intense sunlight and heat will always increase the need for water in your body. So it's unavoidable out here in the desert. But just conserve your liquids and travel at night. I'm just in my shelter, in my parachute sh shelter. I'm just in my parachute shelter. It's not too bad, you know. I've got an absolute beautiful view of the stars. Let's see if you can have a look. I don't know. But... I don't know if this camera will actually pick up any image of the stars. But yeah. So I am kind of slightly scared uh, about the possibility of you know a snake or scorpion finding refuge underneath his parachute. You know, I like that the fact that it's not boiling hot. Like this is like a comfortable temperature. You know, I'm not going to exaggerate. Be like, ah, oh, oh, it's freezing cold. Ah. Oh. Uh, it's night time and it's oh my god it's it's so hard there so it gets so cold at night like it's colder than it is at day as standard but it's kind of nice you know the temperature's perfect we're sleeping outside under the stars it's a nice wind that doesn't make the parachute get in my way in, in, in my face but it's kind of nice uh like I can't, I, I genuinely cannot slam it. Like if this, is, if this was Airbnb, it's getting, it's getting a good four stars. Like the ground isn't really that uncomfortable. My head is slightly above my feet, which is the way it should be. Like it's just kind of good, and it's just it's it's kind of nice sleeping out here, to be honest. Like, during the day, it's been pretty hell. It's been a very, very hard day. My dehydration's still very, very bad, and it is very uncomfortable. But all things said, all things done, I feel quite 
comfortable. Other than the dehydration, I feel quite comfortable, to be honest. Like, yeah. Like, night time temperatures can get very cold in the Sahara Desert. But I guess this part of the Sahara Desert isn't too bad today. Maybe the humidity is a bit higher than it was normally. Because it did have a bit of rain earlier on today. It's obviously evaporated pretty much instantly. Uh. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like, oh. like, I wish I could come back. Oh my God. I feel like the less I drink and have been dehydrated, the more I mess up words I say. Like, I can't complain about this shelter here. Really. I want to try and get some sleep. I want to keep the camera running for as long as I can. But yeah, I just hope no snakes come into my shelter. I hope no scorpions come into my shelter. Yeah, and so I'll get. Well, it's a bit lame, isn't it? Like, survival. You kind of want it to be like a bit ah, like ah, it hurts. Like during the day, it hurts massively. But night time, if you get over the whole, if you kind of, if you can push the whole ah, a snake might come in in the middle of the night and bite me. If you kind of forget about that and don't concern yourself about that because you've got not really any control over it. It's kind of just a nice, it's going to be a nice sleep, I think. So I'm going to tug her. Hi. See you in the morning. Well, I'll just leave the camera running because I guess I can. I've got so much memory cards left and plenty of battery. Well, see, nice speaking to myself because I can see myself on the screen. Ah, 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 ah. No, it isn't nice. Getting sand blown into your eye. Well, I'm going to close my eyes now. Peace.